Welcome to Breakthrough Barriers with Damali. I'm your host, Damali Peterman. On this podcast, we invite you to share a conflict that you need help navigating, and I, along with a guest co-host, will share what we would do in that situation to help you reach your breakthrough. Welcome to the show. On today's episode, I am so excited to welcome Margo Bingham to the show. Margo, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Damali. <laughs> I can't even like contain how excited I am. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to see this. This is obviously audio, but I'm so excited. Jumping I'm for like joy. jumping for joy. I am literally jumping for joy. <laughs> Thanks, um, two of us. Oh my gosh. It's just an honor to sit here and share this space with you. Not only are you just an amazing individual, you're caring, you're loving, you give back to so many different communities. And I'm proud to say you're my friend. Thank you. I adore you. Oh, likewise. And so for those of you who are listening, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't give you some more insight to Margo. Of course, I'm sure you've seen her in all the movies and all the TV shows. And I feel like I, I have to tell you about some of her roles. Uh, of course, she was the jazz chanteuse daughter, Maitland, in the HBO series Boardwalk Empire. Um, she's also a regular on Netflix's uh, reboot of Spike Lee's She's Gotta Have It. Uh, and season two, by the way, is now available. Yes, it it's is. streaming and it's on She's also on ABC's The Family, CBS All Access, $1. She's been in Barbershop 3, Mark Ruffalo's collaboration with Netflix for the indie darling Anything, and most recently added to the small principal cast of NBC's New Amsterdam. And I love that show, by the way. I love that show. I love that show. And I, I used to watch Blacklist before that. Yes. And so I've just been a fan yes, of his. Ryan Eggold. Oh, yes. my God, Ryan Eggold. <laughs> I know. I know. He's, He's dreamy. He's he is dreamy. I, <laughs> I, I love you, Chad. But he is dreamy, Marco. <laughs> He's dreamy. And, of course, she appeared in the 2011 Off-Broadway revival of Rent. And so we'll give you all the information to follow Margot. But as you can see, she is a very busy and important woman. And we're super excited to have her in the studio today on our Breakthrough with Barriers program. Thank you so much. So Margot, I know I've given them some insight to who you are, but tell us some things about you that maybe most people don't know. Uh, I was born and raised in Pittsburgh. I went to school. I went to college for two years, and then I ended up leaving school to come to New York. My parents gave me one year to get my act together, and um, they've always been extremely supportive. I've been really, really lucky in that way that my family has always believed in me and supported me, but they also knew how important education was. So they said, you have one year to to make something of yourself or wow, you you're going them. back to school. <laughs> and sure enough, it was 10 months to the day that I booked rent and it was wow. off of an open call. And I was number 719. I still have the sticker. Wow. And uh, I was lined up outside of a building, a theater in Midtown, um, in like right around Times Square. And I got there at 4 a.m. and I was still 719. Wow. And the call didn't start until nine o'clock in the morning. So I was like, I'm not going to lose this. I'm not going to miss out on this. I showed up at four, um, went by myself and my two other friends said that they were going to come. And then they just like, they were like, I got to sleep. <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> I got to, I got to make it. So <laughs> bye. So, um, <clears throat> so I was there and I went through about 13, uh, 13 casting. Like it's basically like they, they go through the line of people and they point at you and say, yes, no, yes, no. Are you serious? And it's not really, it's, it's like typing out casting. Um, and it's, and it sucks in theory because you're basically getting that done by an intern. Wow. It's not even the casting agent. You haven't even gotten into the room yet. Oh, my goodness. So I do that round for about six times. I had 13 callbacks total in the whole process, but I did that for about six times. And then I finally got into the room Wow. for uh, the producer and director and I remember I had eight bars to sing, which is like a second <laughs> to sing. <laughs> and it was it was acapella. 
and they had no accompanist and they like it's so short that you can't even play that kind of music for that like there's <laughs> there's no pianist for that long so i sang rihanna's umbrella no way i sang eight bars of it and i made it to the next process and then that started my process with rent unbelievable so that was always a really fun and crazy wow. story yeah you sing umbrella i did How thank you rihanna can... yeah i mean R- rihanna has to Riri, know shout out Riri. shout out to Riri. she gave me your start she did eight bars what is eight that bars. just a a yeah like a. basically <laughs> basically it's like half of a hook wow so yeah so i i got i got to the next process after i just like tried to blend in and and get pointed out as yes no yes no wow marco <laughs> yeah. and what time was it when you left you got there oh, it was in the, the afternoon morning. yeah that's a full day. We got inside. I mean, the doors open at about nine. I pretty, I, I remember it still pretty vividly, but I, we got into the building at nine or the doors open and then everybody had to get typed out for the first round. And then people came in, they broke us up into groups and then you got typed out again. Um, and then we were waiting around a little bit and then some of the producers came out and we went off to our lunch or like our early lunch, which was like 1030 in the morning. Wow. And we just kind of wandered around the city until our call time was back for our particular group because there were so many people that they had to break us up into multiple groups. Wow. And I came back, I think in the afternoon around like 130 or two. So I really was there. I was like there overnight. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And how long were you in rent? I did the run for a year and a half. We were open for a year and a half. That's amazing, yeah. Margo. Yeah. I, and awesome. what's that song that everyone sings? Dun, 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 oh, uh, dun, 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 Seasons dun, of Love. Dun. Oh, my gosh. I love that song. Did you sing that song to you? I mean, we all did. I love that song. We line up on the stage and the whole cast sings. Oh, but, I love um, that song. It was really cool. We got to work with Michael Greif, who did the original. Yes. And, uh, and pretty much... All of the same people who were the opening crew for Rent. It was all the same producers, same um, same uh, costume designer. We had the original Mimi suits. We had, I mean, it was awesome. And did any of the original cast come? Wasn't Tay Diggs They in did. It? Yeah, Tay Diggs didn't come. Um, but a lot of other, Adam Pascal came yes, a lot. Yes. Like the Rent family is so small that... Everybody kind of knows each other, so and we all welcome each other with welcome arms. So wow. we have like rent reunions, and we see each other a lot. So it's it's kind of like a secret frat. I'm still best <laughs> friends with um, with a couple of the girls that we shared a dressing room. So it's it's like the sorority that I never had. Oh, that's fantastic! It was cool. So ten months to the date that your parents told you you had a year, yes. you landed this amazing role yeah. in Rent. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. a great way to start. It was a great <laughs> way to start. So it was really special. And after that, you transitioned more into, you know, screen or? After that, I didn't have an agent I, because I went, I was the only one from the open call that got the show. Everybody else came from an agency. Okay. Um, so that was really cool and kind of crazy. But uh I about a year into the run, I was realizing that everybody else had an agent. And then Mm -hmm. that was kind of the the next thing. And usually when you graduate from college or university, you have a showcase for Mm -hmm. the theater department, which basically is a series of song scenes or monologues where the college invites agents to come out, managers to come out. They basically scout for new entertainment, new mm-hmm. new talent. I didn't have that showcase because I left. So I wasn't able to reach out to an agency or have that opportunity to get in front of an agency. So I decided to find 10 of my top agencies that I wanted to go to. And I hired a delivery service a messenger to go hand deliver my headshot and resume to each wow. of these places. And I got four calls back. Um, out of those four calls, I ended up setting three meetings up. Um, one person stood me up and basically I was at, I showed up at the office and I sat in the office and he just stayed on the phone for two hours. No and then way. I decided to leave. And um, and then I had two formal meetings, the other ones. Um, one basically, like, laughed at me. <laughs> what do you mean they, they laughed they were, at They you. were like, I just don't know what to do with you. You don't have any credits. Like, this is going to be kind of a joke to bring to my board. And I was like, okay, so maybe I shouldn't have come here today. Oh, no. <laughs> so uh, I left that office. And then the last office, I ended up having um, 
a meeting with, a good meeting with, and I took into that agency. And that was that was my first agent, and um, and that's where I got Boardwalk. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So when rent closed, I had about six months or eight months of unemployment, and I was going out auditioning, and you know the yo-yo effect of being an actor or performer. And uh, which my guy always says, like, it's not unemployment. It's basically just what you do. You live a life of unemployment. <laughs> but it is unemployment. It feels like that. And it can feel really down. But uh, by the eighth month, I think I went out for rent or for boardwalk. And they were looking for uh, like a background singer, like mm-hmm. a jazz singer. And I went through, I think, four, four or five auditions with that. And um, – it was supposed to be like a day player role and it turned into two seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Which was crazy. Which is, by the way, like my first introduction to you was for seeing you in that role. I love that role yeah. so much. I mean, it seemed like it was made for you. Uh, I felt like it was. I really did. I, it was, it was great because I didn't feel like I had to be exactly like somebody in the 20s mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of that kind of iconic figure, but I still was able or felt like I could pay homage to all of these singers that came before me that were making a name for themselves when they weren't really able to and nobody was speaking up for them. Mm-hmm. So it was um, it was such a unbelievable process. I was working around the clock because when I wasn't shooting on set, I was in rehearsal for dancing. Mm-hmm. When I wasn't dancing in dance rehearsal for the big performance numbers, I was in the recording studio recording all the songs. I ended up leaving the first season with 54 songs recorded. Wow. And most people don't realize this, but if you go back and you watch season four, all of those songs that I recorded, some of them they weaved throughout different scenes. Oh, I have to go back and watch. So I'm like singing – I'm the singing undertone throughout the whole season, which really sets up our storyline in an awesome way. But I didn't even pick up that they did that until I was like, wait, is that? (laughs) I think that's me. Well, well, that's like when I was watching um, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel one day and I'm sitting there watching it and Chad and I are like talking and we're watching it. And then I'm like, hmm, something's familiar about this. (laughs) It took me like a second. And then I was like, wait a minute, that's Margo. Yeah, it was awesome. That's insane. The the crew for that show was all of Boardwalk crew, oh. and I hadn't seen them since Boardwalk closed. So it was it had been six years, mm-hmm. and I literally showed up on set, and it was like the best reunion. Oh. Um, Midge's ex husband uh, was also in Boardwalk. Michael, we did Boardwalk together. He was part of like. Um, the Jews and Italian story. Okay. Um, he's a phenomenal actor and I got to hang out with him. So it, it just felt like a big reunion. The hair and makeup crew was all people from the family from the ABC show that I did. So I got to see them. It was awesome. It That's was amazing. awesome. And it's like one of my favorite shows. So it's a great show. It's awesome. And, and seeing you it was on great. it blew my mind. It was awesome. And uh, I wish that it was longer, but oh, it was You have to come back on the show. I know. I <laughs> Maybe after this it was like podcast. That was like a real run and done. But <laughs> <laughs> well, what's amazing too, Margot, is no matter where we go, everyone knows you in every in every setting. Even when we went to um, see Now Rogers perform and everyone's like, oh, Margot. Go like Jerry Barnes yeah. knows you. Everyone knows you. Yeah, I've, you- I've weird. I've like had a weird. Uh, I I guess really lucky and grateful transit into New York that mm-hmm. I've just I've hit all of these different pockets, not on purpose, um, just because I've said yes to a lot of opportunities, and I've been really grateful and graced with a lot of amazing people around me. I just have I I've met awesome people. I met not so awesome people too, but those people have given me better people along the way as well. So it's um I have so many different pockets of people in this town that it really is such a big little city. It is. And I think it's also a testament to your personality, uh, to your character, to the type of person that you are, that people just love you and they continue to love you. And that these reunions are like sincere, authentic kind of fellowship gatherings of Thank folks you. just kind of saying, look, it's Margo. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> and that. I think that that spirit, that energy that you have is just so wonderful. And what I like about what you said before was you received a few callbacks. You put like 10 out there. You received a few. Mm-hmm. The first one, you didn't have an opportunity to, to actually even 
make contact. The guy was on the phone for a couple of hours. Yeah. He waited. The other person was like, oh, you have no credits. I mean, which is funny, right? People want you to have experience, but how can you get experience Always. if they don't give you a shot, Always. right? Yeah. And then the third one, you were like, this works out. And that's how you landed an amazing role in Boardwalk. And the reason that I point that out for our listeners is because sometimes you got to get a few no's before yeah. you get that yes. Right. And sometimes it's only, you only need one yes. Right. To, it's going to be majority of no's. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. going to be majority of no's. And if uh, also, and I, I'm realizing as my career continues to build and grow, it's it, the stakes are higher. So it feels harder when I hit the no's mm-hmm. because the lows are even harder that it's very easy to keep in mind all of the no's. But that's also not a way to go. Yeah. You know, if, if you're not positive and thinking that there's going to be a yes, like you just have to stick it, stick it out and just be strong and just stay true to what you are then there's going to be a yes. There's going to be something coming your way. And it's so simple to to remember yeah. all of the no's and think back and remind yourself of the no's. And I think that that's where a lot of people fall into an issue is is it can, it can jade you and burn you in a way that it won't get you so prepared for the yes to receive the yes yeah. because you will be in such a bad place because you've just been reminding yourself of all of the no's that you've gotten. So what do you do, Margot, to keep this positivity and to kind of be prepared for the yeses because you're always smiling? Uh, I meditate. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm I a meditate. Fan. <laughs> um, I always say in the morning before I grab my phone because it's like my action just to go and pick up my phone right away when I wake up. That's just what we just do, you know, if mm-hmm. you're turning off your alarm or whatever. Um, I shut off my alarm first because that's annoying. <laughs> and then uh, I say three things that I'm grateful for. Yes, the great, the gratitude yes. practice. Gratitude practice. I do practice. that too. Yeah. And sometimes it's as simple as I didn't wake up with knee pain today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is something that is super, super, I could be really oh, grateful God. for that. <laughs> I could be really grateful. But, and then, and then it can turn into, you know, I'm grateful that I had clean sheets to put over my body last night. Yes. You know, it's, yes. there's, there is gratitude in everything. And if you can't find it in your profession, then you can find it somewhere else. It doesn't necessarily have to be from your family. It could be from your friends that you've made into your family um, or the family that you've made, but, uh, or just something as, as vain as like, I, I like my hair today. Yes. Yes. No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> be grateful for what you got. Well, you know, what's amazing, Margo. Timing is just a, a, a wonderful and mysterious thing mm-hmm. because I learned about the gratitude practice a couple of weeks ago. Okay. I was, it was during the Tory Burch foundation week. Yes. Um, I saw you that week yes. and, uh, one of the mediation coaches, she has a company called Impact Visionary. Her name is Carmen Morcos. And she was talking about someone who taught her, and his name escapes me at the moment, but I know he's a very prolific author and writer. And when we publish this, I'll put, I'll find out and put the name in the, in the notes. Mm-hmm. Um, but she taught us about the gratitude practice, yes. about writing something, you know, it's three things every day. And that what that does is it retrains your brain to look for positive things because mm-hmm. there's so many different uh, things going on every day. There's so much negativity, you know, sometimes in the news and around you. And so if you retrain your brain with this gratitude practice of scanning for positivity, it could be things as small as I like the way this shirt feels on my arm. Mm -hmm. And so that week when I learned it, I saw you that week, as you know, I was sick that week. I lost my voice and all of these things happened. And I had just started the gratitude practice and I I wished I had my journal with me. But if I had my journal, what I would show you is that on that Thursday, after I saw you Wednesday and you were amazing and telling me different ways to, to uh, get better with, and shout out to Whole Foods with all these yeah, amazing, right. yes. <laughs> all these amazing um, natural products. On Thursday morning, when I did my gratitude practice, mm-hmm. I wrote that I was thankful for you and for oh. all the time you spent helping me to figure out how to feel better. Thank so you. you were one of my three things oh my that I was God. grateful for. It's going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cry. It doesn't take much to get me to cry. So <laughs> well, you are an amazing you just, actress. You just we totally nailed that to Molly. Jeez, <laughs> but it's true. But it's true. And for those of you who are listening in. 
the gratitude practice is something that everyone can do. And all you have to do is every day, you pick a time, it could be mm-hmm. in the morning, it could be at night. But to me, for me, I'm a person who's a creature of habit. Yeah. So if I do the same thing every day, then I'll keep doing it. Yes. And so just write down three things that you're grateful for. I have to tell you, I even told my husband this. I told my kids this. I And I, I don't have them write it down once for, he can write, but you know, yeah. once for. But I say to them every day, tell me something that you're grateful for. It tell totally me, sets the tone. It sets the tone for the day. Yeah. And because they know I'm going to ask every day, now they're like, mom, I know. They think about they it. Think about it and yeah. they have something. And at first it was like, I'm grateful for my milk. I'm grateful for my toys. Yeah. But now it's like, I'm grateful that the sun came out today. Yeah. And I was like, right? Because it's been raining every day. Right. So please think about incorporating gratitude practice. You know, I can sit here and talk to Margo all day and totally not remember that I want, we have some messages. <laughs> <laughs> There's some people who called into our show. We just happen to have a microphone <laughs> in front of us. We have a microphone. <laughs> well, I love the format. We can just hang out and talk. I know. And it's like all these people are eavesdropping on our conversation. That's right? good. As if we were in a restaurant eating and they're like, oh, look at Margo over there. She's talking to that girl. What are they talking about? Oh, and you have, you're privy to this conversation that I'm having with my friend Margo. That's awesome. Um, but for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, I want you to understand the way that our, our show works. And basically, we have a hotline where folks can call in and just ask questions that they're contemplating. It could be a conflict. It could be a situation where they're like, Uh, I have three different options for job opportunities and I really want to hear from someone who doesn't have a vested interest in the outcome. I really want to know what someone else thinks who's not my mom or my friend Mm -hmm. or my sister or my boss. And so that's the benefit of calling our hotline um, where I, along with a guest co-host, will talk about it. We'll say what we would do if we were in your shoes. And it's a kind of it's kind of a great way to just think of other options, to mm-hmm. consider the inside of someone else. And so what are you waiting for? Pick up your phone, call us 646-363-3622 and leave a message. So this is the first time that Margaret will hear this message. Margaret hasn't heard this message before. I have not heard this message. <laughs> She's here on Faith and Trust. I am here. <laughs> and basically, we'll play our first message, and then we'll weigh in. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Without further ado, our first message. You have, you one, have message. one message. Hi, my name is Brianna, and something that I'm dealing with right now is work, balance between work and passion. So I have a nine to five, Mm. but I'm also in the beauty industry as well. But I just feel like I never have time to network. And that's also another issue that I have. How do I begin to network? Like, Like I literally do not know where to start, being that I'm just so overwhelmed with work. I feel like I just never have time. So where do I start with balance? Like how do I balance my job and my passion for beauty to jumpstart my business? Okay, Brianna, that is a good question. So I have a lot of thoughts on this. Um, Some people will probably disagree, but I believe you really have to, in order to balance, you have to fully put in all of your heart into your passion. But you can't do that because you have to financially take care of yourself. So my game plan and what I did when I came to New York was I saved up money. I worked really, really hard for a solid year. Um, I had three jobs and I put away and aside money so that when I came to New York, I could focus completely on my passion and not be deterred by getting caught up in paying my rent or uh, other financial burdens. So If you want to be completely all in on the makeup and beauty line and industry, you have to dedicate a year that you know that is going to be all about work. And you're not going to like it because it's not doing what you are passionate about, but you know that you're putting that work in for your passion and it might take two years to get there, but then you'll put two years and you'll be even hungrier when you get to that point. And then you won't have to worry about it and you won't have to feel so burdened by it at the end of the day or so exhausted. And then you can save up money, put that to the side. You might have to make some adjustments with where you're living. You might have to go back home or live with a cousin or live with a family member to kind of cut cut costs for rent. Um, you might have to st- kind of stop doing a lot of the social activities if it's going out to dinner all the time, if it's uh, going to restaurants, having drinks, uh, you know, going on trips, 
put your focus and attention to where you really want to see the outcome. And if that's in your passion, then you need to start planning for it. I think that's fantastic. I agree 100%. Um, There are some things that are within your control, Mm -hmm. right? And I think sometimes uh, in our minds, we compartmentalize things. Mm -hmm. And so I have my nine to five, I have my work, I have my passion, it's over here. And so in addition to what Margot is saying, which she so eloquently gave you kind of a, a great roadmap, if you will, that may work for many people. Um, In addition to that, I would also add that sometimes there's a way to combine your passion and your nine to five. Yeah, it's true. Right? And mm-hmm. so maybe, you know, I'm just, we have no idea of what you do. You know, let's say you work in accounting or let's say you work in an office job right. and you said that your passion is in the beauty industry. Well, is there a way to have a mixer at work where, you know, like you have beauty tips for, you know, folks or is there yeah. a way to start finding innovative methods of combining your work and passion? Or is there somebody at your work that, that maybe needs like a, a makeover yes. for an outing or for a big conference or event that you can start hiring, you know, private hires. Yes. That's, I mean, that is, of course, that's an amazing, amazing option too. Yeah. I mean, I like, I like giving people like a, a pathway. And so you can do this for a year. You can trying to think about the, you can rethink the way that you're currently operating so that you can find a path to embrace your passion. You can also start thinking of ways, as we were just saying, to do it at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, my path was a little different. And of course, it everyone has a different situation, right? Mm-hmm. And so my path was different. I was working in a corporate environment and I was doing work that I was good at, but I wasn't passionate about it. Mm-hmm. And for my side hustle, if you will, it wasn't something that was as cool as like beauty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was more, I like fixing things. I like helping people solve problems. How do I do that? Because in the environment that I worked in, I didn't get to choose who my clients were. People would just come in and they would say, Damali, you're assigned to this case, you're assigned to this matter, you're assigned to this, do you take care of it. And so I did my job and I always did my job well, but I had I couldn't help as many people as I wanted to help. And if you work in the corporate environment, you really can are only helping people who could afford to pay, you know, to pay for your your rates. And so to me, I was passionate about helping people. I was passionate about uh teaching others how to resolve their own conflicts. And so what I did was I took a sheet of paper, I wrote down everything that I knew how to do, Mm -hmm. and then I circled what I love to do. And in that I saw kind of a theme you know, surface. And in that theme, it was, I love providing legal services. I love mediating, you know, basically being in the middle and helping people to resolve their conflicts. And I love teaching people how to resolve their own conflicts. Kind of like, you know, give a man a fish, he eats for a day, give a man, you know, teach him how to fish, he eats for a lifetime. And so I noticed throughout my career that so many things that rose to the level of needing me as an attorney could have had a different outcome if people had the tools themselves to de-escalate the conflict. Mm-hmm. And so that's what, that was my passion. That's what, that's what I wanted to do. And so I left my job and I started doing that. Um, but I had a situation where I had a lot of support. Right. Right. And, and you had a plan. And I had a plan. Right. I had a plan. I had support. And I think one of the things that Margot and I were talking about earlier um, is how timing and opportunity align. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, Things were aligned really wonderfully uh, 10 months out for you to be able to get that awesome, you know, roll and rent. Right. Um, and so, you know, everything has a time and a purpose. But I do love, I do love this idea that you can start, you can have this plan. I think that was a great way to think about it. You can have this plan. You can start cutting back on some things that may be, you know, competing for your time. Mm-hmm. You can start trying to different pathways. I love that, Margo. Yeah, but I think also what you're saying is great too. And it's important, and I didn't kind of, I, I didn't emphasize this enough And what I was talking about with having a financial plan and financial stability, but you also, during this time, if you're putting away money and you're kind of planning for the future, you really, it's important for you to sit down with an actual plan because you are taking time to to go into the next thing and it's not just going to happen. It's not just going to show up. Unfortunately, we're in a lot of a generation where people just think that opportunities are going to fall into their lap and you can turn around and you can be an actor tomorrow. That's not going to work. And sometimes it does, but like for the most people, it, it majority <laughs> of people, it does not. So you have to really think about, okay, have I gone to school for this? Have mm-hmm. I studied this? Who are my connects? Who are my biggest makeup companies that I love? Who are the best makeup artists that I follow? 
what are some of the best uh, foundations and people that work with with young makeup artists that can help me with like a beauty or estheticians? Or is there a receptionist that you can then change your job into an esthetician office? Yes. Or can you work a nine to five at a Sephora or Mac and learn from some of these makeup artists along the way, just sit there and just watch. You can change a lot of your mentality if you don't think about the one or the other, it's yes. all inclusive. So it's not just planning about finance and putting that money away. It's a it's the big picture. So you have to kind of go in with the big picture. That is exactly right. And I think sometimes we get so like focused on the details or like I want this like outcome mm -hmm. that we don't think about the big picture. And I love that. And hopefully, Brianna, that is really helpful. I think one of the other questions that you had was how do you network? And so how do you find time? She said she was so tired after, you know, working the nine to five and then trying to fit in the beauty on the side that she was so tired she couldn't network. Well, I think a lot of the networking can be done on a job. I think a lot of it can be done in the workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, if if you're able to transition into a different job where it is in the beauty realm, you're networking. Yes. You're there. Um, if they're not giving you that opportunity to work at that office, how can you create a relationship with the people at that office if that's where you want to be? How can you follow up with them? How can you find out what their likes are that you can then learn from them or ask somebody to mentor you? Or, you know, there's there's different ways that you can network just in your environment. Yes. And I think the the most important thing is not to seek out like a networking opportunity or an event where you have to go and meet people create the environment and event and it could just be at an office i agree with you i it's so amazing how there's so many organic ways to network that we don't think about because mm -hmm. we're always like where's the next event um Every time I go to like my kid's school, for example, mm -hmm. one of my first uh, clients from my law firm just happened to be uh, a, a, another co-class co mom. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't even working at the time. She was in between jobs. But then when she got a new job and that office needed to hire an attorney, she said, oh, I know a great attorney. Exactly. And I was like, wow. Like exactly. I wasn't even, you know, it was right. amazing. You don't even like put that out there. Yeah. You're just around it. You're it's just the same thing. It. If I'm on set... And I'm, I book a new job and I meet all of these new producers and new directors and new writers. All of a sudden, my network grows. Yeah. And it's just because of a job that I'm taking that I wasn't expecting for it to grow, but because of the people that I'm surrounding with, with like-minded kind of opportunities and, and relationships, it just expands that much more. Yes. And then they might be doing a movie and they're like, you know what? I really enjoyed working with Margot. Let's call Margot in for this. And that's happened a lot. Wow. So I, it's just this, it's the same thing. You're just like you can literally walk into a grocery store and you can network. It's so true. You just at, have to be at the open hair for salon. It. Yeah. You see me in the hair salon. You have salon. to be open for it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, oh, you look amazing. You do too. And the next thing you know, they'll say, oh, I'm going to this event. Do you want to come? And that's the other thing I would say to you, Brianna, is when people ask you to do something, if you can, show up. Yeah. You know, being in the right place or just showing up to me is like Amen. half of it. Right? That is because majority of the battle. It's, it's the majority of it, right? Yeah. And, and what I've learned is if you show up people will continue to invite you there's nothing worse than like someone like vouching for you and then saying you're going to do something and then you don't show up keep your word please keep your word yes. oh my gosh because as you're building this new as you're pursuing this new opportunity I, you're going to have to have these people who can say you know brianna i know her she's spectacular because beauty is a saturated market mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so i think the other thing too is just kind of thinking about ways to be less overwhelmed with work because you talked about being overwhelmed with work. Um, we don't know what you do, yeah. right? And so we have to make some assumptions that, you know, something that you're not passionate about based on based on what you said. Um, but I think we've given you a lot of things to think about. Definitely. You know, different paths to to, to getting there, um, some tips for networking organically. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you know what I was thinking, Margo? Hmm. The last thing I'll say is, what do you think about this? The fact that she even called to ask the question, I mean, that to me is kind of... Setting, she's hungry. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's hungry and she's putting it out there. Mm -hmm. So I think more doors will start to open. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. So just keep putting it out there. Keep telling people what you're passionate about and then maybe some other opportunities will arise. Yeah, and keep learning too. Yeah. Always learn. Yeah. You can always learn. Absolutely. Excellent. So Brianna, hopefully that was helpful. Please like call us and let us know. Yeah, let us know how your roadmap goes. Yeah, that would Good be luck. excellent. Best of luck to you. Uh, let's play the second message. You have, you one, have message. one message. Hi, Dolly. I have a question for uh, Margaret Bringham. I was wondering, um, 
kind of as someone who's in the film industry and someone who's you know a, a, a very good actor, I was wondering when did you exactly start to feel comfortable in uh, your role as an actress or, or anyone involved with film? Thank you. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that that is a work in progress, I would have to say. A girlfriend of mine just told me this the other day, and I have to steal it because it's so good. And I said, how do you do it all? And she said, oh, I'm constantly editing. I'm constantly editing. And she's editing her life. And it's fine to be able to do that. Uh, I am I am constantly editing. I think that when I first started, obviously I had the insecurities that anybody would into a new field. And I think that now that I have more opportunities under my belt, new insecurities arise because there's more that I have put out there. There's more that people expect of me and there's more that I expect of myself. So um, I, I'm a work in progress with uh, feeling comfortable and confident. Um, I think that the day that I feel extremely confident and have no nerves left is the day that I should leave the industry. So that's that's a very short answer, but, um, that's <laughs> but very just real. How I, that's how I feel. And yeah. very deep. And I like this concept of constantly editing, mm -hmm. constantly revisiting, revising, constantly learning, because as you said, the more you do, the more expectations people have of you and that you have of yourself. And so that kind of idea of keep of continuing to grow mm -hmm. and to expand is amazing because that's what keeps you like, you know, a fresh, you know, growing. Absolutely. And keeps the industry interesting, right? Yeah, it does. And there's a lot of times that I put pressure on myself because I think that, you know, we're our own worst critic and mm -hmm. we think that we could be better and better and best. And sometimes you just kind of have to let that go and and you're going to be how you're going to be. You just have to make sure that you show up completely for it. You put in the work and whatever comes out, you just have to accept it. It might not be your best, but um, but it's the best that you have that day. I like that. So what do you do, Margo? Do you have like a a mantra or some things that you do before each taping or each performance? Do you have like a routine? My Probably the only routine that I have that's consistent for all of my prog projects that I've done is music. I, I find the character's music and soundtrack. It's really important for me when I book a job – I think about, okay, so what should, what, what would she listen to? Like, how would she, you know, if it's a frustrated scene, what would she listen to in this moment? If it's a, um, if it's a love scene, how would she go into this date? You know, like what would she be getting ready with? So I think about, and I'm really careful with the soundtrack that plays for her. And I listen to that soundtrack so that I could really live in her body. Oh, wow. That's the one thing, um, that, and this is going to sound super weird, but, um, nails, Nails. I think about nails. Like on your hands? Like on your hands. Okay, not like, like nails and no, a hammer. Like not nails and a hammer, <laughs> um, even though that's good therapy. But it's just nails on your fingers. Like I constantly think about that of because there are certain types of women that wear their nails and fingers differently. So true. And it really goes with the personality. Wow, how so detail-oriented. It's so bizarre, but like if I'll have, you know, sometimes I like to get my nails done and like really fancy with like the tips and everything mm. and, you know, like the stiletto tips that all these these women are doing these days, the girls <laughs> are doing. Um, but if I have an audition and it's a working-class mom, she's not going to have stiletto nails. So even if I just got my nails done and I have to go in for an audition, I will remove them. Wow. Um, to the hurt and pain that I'll have in my soul <laughs> that I just charged my credit card, <laughs> but um, and sat for an hour. But uh, but it will. I won't be doing my best if I have them. That's amazing. That level of detail and embodying the character and thinking about putting yourself in her shoes and thinking about what would she do if she were this role. Right. That's why you're so excellent, Margo. Thank you. That's why. Do you ever have like a, I, I, I see this every day. I read about this all the time. And I think to some extent, many people have this at some point, regardless of their industry, career, profession, imposter syndrome. Uh, yeah. 
Yes and no. I think that I am acutely aware of the type of business that I'm in, so much so that sometimes it it's a fault. Um, I know that this industry can be a lot of smoke and mirrors. And a lot of the times, most people see what I'm doing and they think it's super glamorous, but they don't see the waiting around time. They don't see the downtime. They don't see the lows. They don't see me sitting at home majority of my days trying to manifest and think about and work on the work and think about what's next or um, have a plan for myself or just wake up that day. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that I'm so acutely aware of the smoke and mirrors that it's pretty hard to get lost in this. And I'm lucky enough that I, I have not made a name of myself when I was a kid and I've had really great parents that have kept me grounded and I have a great partner that keeps me grounded. And, um, and there's, there's never a time that I'm so high that I forget who I am. I love it. Always remember who you are. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So any any parting words? I mean, I, I'm so happy that you asked that question, caller, about ways to feel comfortable in your role. And it, it, for Margo, she's saying that there are a few things that she does. She has her routine. She really gets into the character, thinks about the music, the soundtrack of their life, and that kind of helps her to prepare. And she also thinks about nails, which I don't think is weird. I think that's really, <laughs> it's really I've keen I've said it to insight. a couple of friends and they're like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, never mind. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense to like me. Friends that are actors and they're like, that is, that's the craziest thing. I'm like, Margo, well, you know, we all one. have our own thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no judgments. And that's my thing. My yeah. thing is, I, I think, I think that's very smart. I mean, I, that makes sense to me that you would, it's, it's like you're really diving deep into the character, but I think in many different ways, people, regardless of what your profession is, as you're listening to this, there are ways that you can incorporate this thinking into mm -hmm. what you're doing. So if you're in a position where you're, to say you're working with various uh, different types of audiences, you what you may present to one audience may change for a different audience, what you might wear. I know when I had to go work at Google, I wasn't gonna wear like a, a full suit because right. I knew that folks there were more casual. Right. And when I work with the NYPD, you know, when I, and they have to dress up, I dress up. When they right. don't dress up, I don't dress up. Right. You know, so I'm thinking about the audience. So it's not that dissimilar from what you're saying. For sure. Yeah. You're like getting into the mind of your character to the point where you're like, would she have on these fancy stiletto tips today? Maybe not. Yeah. You know? It might so, be a little inappropriate. Yeah. So I How like that. How could she that. afford that? <laughs> How could she afford that? She probably so, couldn't. She's oh, working three jobs. It's How could she or sit, it's you a, know? Or it's has, a luxury. Right. And she has know? like two kids. How could she, how does she have time to sit down at a nail salon yes, look at my for nails. an hour and a half. Oh, you don't even <laughs> want to see my nails right now. That's why I was like hesitant to even tell you because they look busted. But I've seen your nails look spectacular. But you know, yeah, when it's when it's time, I you know I show up for it. But what I like about that is just basically thinking about ways to be comfortable and how that can change depending on the situation that you're in. So caller, if if your question is trying to figure out, you know, how to be comfortable in different environments because I want this to be applicable to more than those who are in the acting field. Mm -hmm. um, just figuring out what that routine, that rhythm is for you. Thinking about like, what is what is your version of nails, you know, yeah. for your position and doing what, what it takes. I mean, I, I, for me, um, I love music. The last time I saw Margo, I think we had a moment of, I could barely talk, but we were singing uh, Luther Vandross. Yes, right? we were. <laughs> and so that music has been kind of, for me, me, the way that I get pumped and get in the mood. Yes. Um, one of uh, our, my guests in the podcast uh, recently as a great, great, amazing doctor, and she asked me what I used to do when I pre would prepare for exams. And I said, oh, I used to play before every exam, Who's That Girl by Eve. And she was like, what, you, oh Damoli? And I was like, every exam, I would get in the zone, kind of like Rocky getting ready, and I would play Who's That Girl. That's what I did. And so That's amazing. That's am I had a soundtrack for each childbirth, <laughs> right? That's, I had a and, playlist. Yes, and I just, I just talked to a girlfriend about that, too. She just gave birth to her first child and I didn't even think about that but oh, yeah. she was like I you know I'm gearing up my playlist and I was like wait a second 
<laughs> that is amazing. Oh, yeah. That's true. I would probably hire like a guitarist just to sit and just play. It might be really awkward for him, <laughs> but I don't really care. But like just, you know, just sit and just like Spanish guitar, yes. just play. Put you just, in the right mood. But that is, I mean, it's true. There is a soundtrack that drives all of yes, us. Yes, it's true. It, it's true. So find find your soundtrack. Yeah. I love that, Margo. That's great, great advice. Find your soundtrack and whatever it is, use that to help you gain more comfort in your profession or industry. Uh, even if it's something that, you know, you're planning to change at some point, just figure it out mm -hmm. and that'll help keep you grounded. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Margo, I I can't thank you enough for being here today. Thanks for having me, Damon. Oh, you are such an an enigma. I, I just thank just you. bask in your glory, and I take <laughs> some of your sunshine, and I put it in a bottle, and I keep it so so I can just think about ways to be a better person. And one of the things I wanted to make sure I, I mentioned is you do some amazing work in a lot of countries, including with children, I do. Um, all over the world. And I and the reason why I wanted to end with that is because as you said, so things that people see and know and things that they don't see and know and you're such a humble person but I know you would never talk about this but Margo is doing some incredible things it's not just what you see on TV and what her, that beautiful melodic voice um, but it's also some of the things that she does when no one's watching which to me is how you truly know how amazing someone is is the things they do when they don't know anyone's looking and that's I think is a definition of like integrity right thank you so thank you for just being a wonderful person and I'm just honored to share this early Earth with you at the same time. Thank you. And I have to give a shout out to the company that I work with in case anybody is ever looking for a foundation that really gives back and follows, that you're able to follow the money and make sure that it goes to the right places and the right kids. This is the organization. Orphan Starfish is the organization to give to. Um, I work with the sister company, which is basically the wife of the husband that created Orphan Starfish, and it's called Arte Amor, and she is the art department of Orphan Starfish. And we go around and we teach music and work with kids all around the world. They have 29 orphanages globally, and they literally are never in the U.S. because they're <laughs> always with their thousands of children, and they, they watch them grow, and they bring them to university and then they watch them become incredible adults and create families of their own out of abuse or whatever they came from that was horrible beginnings. So uh, if anybody is ever interested in that, orphanstarfishosf.org. Thank you so much. And I, the one of the most wonderful things that I've ever encountered with Margot was her showing me pictures of her last uh, mission. It's probably not the right word, but of her it's, last yeah, trip, her yeah. last mission. And I'm showing her folks, show pictures of my kids and she's showing me her kids from the I mission. I know, my babies. And I was so, I was, it, was just, it just warmed my heart. Oh, they warm warm mine. <laughs> they really, they, uh, I mean, I could just cry <laughs> on here all day. <laughs> so we have done this interview. <laughs> well, thank you again, Margaret, for being here today. Thank you, Damali. I'm your host, Damali Peterman, and this is Breakthrough Barriers with Damali. Continue to break through and have a wonderful day. Do you have any barriers that we can help you break through? If so, you can leave a brief message at 646 363 6322 or on our interactive blog at www.breakthroughadr.com. Please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at the at sign B R E A K T H R O U G H capital A capital D capital R. I'm your host, Damali Peterman, and this is Breakthrough Barriers with Damali. Although I am a lawyer, mediator, and an educator, and many of my co-hosts will represent various professions, we want to be clear that we are not providing legal advice, counseling, or suggestions. Our goal is to provide a roadmap for conflict resolution to generate future conflict resolvers. Continue to break through and have a wonderful day.